We are starting with a blank slate for this particular lab and no diagram because I want you to get used to the fact that sometimes you're going to go into a client site or maybe even in, have to handle an exam question practice or otherwise without a nice neat diagram. You've got to learn a little of this information yourself as to what's going on. I haven't planted a problem here for you, but I just want you to get used to gathering information on your own rather than always having a picture there, because believe me, that's not always going to happen. So what is a really good command just to even to get started to see what's running on this router right now as far as a routing protocol? And that's a huge hint, that last word. Show IP protocols. You always come home to show IP protocols. And you can see here that I have first off configured RELP and I did take the previous configs off from the last video and then put some new ones on. So that's what we're actually gathering information on here. And you can see I left uh, the defaults as far as the timers. We've seen that sending update every 30 seconds quite a while now. But we can also see that I did successfully hard code version 2 for sending and receiving. We also see that I have got eight loopback interfaces that I've, inter I've enabled RIP on. So we've got something different going on there. And assuming, I know, but assuming you knew the 172.12.123.0 network was the one we were working with and you'd see that was show config, we can also see that we're getting information from 123.2. And we know where that is from all these labs. We know that's router 2. If we're routing for these two networks, and we know that 172.12.0.0 is the serial network, then what network must I be running these loopbacks on? I must be running them on 20.0.0.0, and we'll have a quick look and just verify that on show config. And there are the loopbacks, and you can see exactly what I've done here is taken one address from each of those eight subnets, put it on the loopbacks, and we know that I'm advertising them with rep. So right now, if we go down to router 2, we should see an individual entry for each one of those subnets. And we do, and we'll go ahead and just ping a couple of them. Love show IP protocols. You can walk in without a diagram, you can walk in not knowing what's going on, you run that, you write out a couple things, and all of a sudden, you know, you're on your way. So we're not really troubleshooting anything here because there's not really a problem here with this particular routing table. But I think you know already what I'm going to say. And that's that we really like our tables to be complete and concise. And you know what's screaming at us right here is this 123.1 next top IP address for every single route in this table. So what we could do is configure a default route and that would bring the table down while still allowing router 2 to communicate with all of those loopbacks. And frankly, any loopbacks that were added because the next hop is going to be 123.1 period. So how can we do that? We've already done a default static route. I want to show you a different way of generating a default route. And I'm going to make a couple pointers here. If you haven't even seen OSPF before, don't worry about it. But I'm going to mention it here because the command I'm about to show you is also a popular OSPF command. And it works a little bit differently in OSPF than it does in RELP. So when we get to the OSPF section, I will mention that again and we'll draw a clear line as to what this command does with RIP and what it can do with OSPF. So with no further ado, let's see what this command is. We're going under the RIP router process, and it starts with default, and holy cow, that's a lot of options just for default route. But what we're using here is a command called default information originate. And there is a pesky little hyphen here in between default and information. So the first couple times you enter it in a lab environment, you might trip over that, just watch out for that. And here's the definition, control distribution of default information. Wow, that's, uh, that's heavy. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say it doesn't make any sense. I should say that it's not terribly helpful. You know, sometimes iOS help just says, hey, here's what this command does. And then sometimes you get control of the distribution of default information. Well, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and see exactly what this command does because the only option I have with this is originate. So it's default hyphen origin information, then the word originate. And it says distribute a default route. Okay. 
Now we have a route map reference, and route mapping is for your future studies. You do not have to worry about it right now. It's not part of this layout. But notice that I don't have any other options. And when we come to distribute a default route, I assure you that I do not have a route here on router 1, a default route that is. So what's going to happen if I try to originate or distribute a default route in RIP on router 1 if I don't have one? Hmm, let's find out. Let's go ahead and hit enter. So nothing bad happened there. Let's go down to router 2 and have a look at our RIP routing table. And we've got a new route. Hmm. Now again, router 1 did not have a default route to distribute. But the default information originate command in RIP allows a router to advertise a default route that it actually doesn't even have. Hmm. So that's a pretty powerful command. Now the thing is though, we love this because we see the R asterisk there. We know that asterisk indicates the default route. And we look at this, and that's what our default route, default route looks like. There's our administrative distance. There's our metric. There's our next hop IP address. And all of this is wonderful, but notice that all of the non-default routes are still in router 2's routing table. And that's not really what we want if we're trying to shrink the routing table down. So I want to show you that by default, the default information originate command in rep. A couple things to notice about it. First off, we've already seen this, but I want to mention it again with router 1. Router 1 did not have a default route to distribute, but the default information originate command allowed it to do so. It's advertising a default route, but it's not doing anything about the more specific routes. And that's why we see all these RIP routes down here. Now, if we want to filter these out, there is a way to do it. It's beyond the scope of the CCNA exam, but I am going to show it to you because it's a handy thing to know. But, oh, there's that but. Uh, I know I mentioned this at the end of the previous video. I was going to give you a little bonus information here. And this is what I was talking about, about filtering these routes out. But you need to understand access lists first. And that section is coming up. So what we're going to do in the access list section is revisit this lab. We're going to come right back to this point, and I'm going to show you how to filter the routes out then. If I show it to you now, it might not stick with you because some of you haven't even seen an access list in action yet, and I don't want you to see them until we do some walkthroughs and some simpler work with them. So we will come back to this, but again, those are some important points with the default information originate command with RIP, and when we use it with OSPF later in the course, we'll make sure to draw a line there, see what it does with RIP, see what it does with OSPF, so on exam day, you are crystal clear on the differences. For now, by golly, I think that is enough RIP. For those of you who haven't done the subnetting section yet, that's coming up next. If you did the subnetting section before this section, certainly feel free to walk through it again. But if not, you can go ahead to the access list material. One way or the other, let's move forward.